Greetings, viewers, and welcome back to Just Short of Fantastic. We are back from May. I took April off because I just wasn't feeling a vlog that month. I'm sorry, but I'm back now, and boy, do I have something really ultra special. April 30th was the 20-year anniversary of the release date of Mean Girls. Mean Girls, that high school movie starring Rachel McAdams and Lindsay Lohan that was so memeable and gifable and just a lot was being done with Mean Girls. So in 2004, I would have been 17 and that would have been, you know, the prime age to go and see that movie. But for some reason, I did not see this movie when it came out. I didn't see it in theaters. I didn't get a DVD from anybody I knew. Pass me by like a school bus out of hell. Crimes against school bus drivers in the original movie. Seriously. Well, maybe we'll talk about that later. I don't know. Also the original movie, the teachers in that movie. Crimes against teachers being a former teacher. I get Ooh, do not talk to me about how teachers are represented in movies, but mostly I have big love for Mean Girls, the original version and the new musical version, because you know I saw the musical version in theaters, obviously. Um, I had been familiar with the Mean Girls Broadway musical, but I had never seen the original movie. Since it was all over the internet when that movie came out and then for years afterwards, I know the story and I know the characters. I just, for some reason, the movie missed me. And at some point it became a thing where it's like, you haven't seen Mean Girls? What? I'm like, no, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen Mean Girls. And at this point, I'm too afraid to watch it. So I let 20 years go by. And because the new musical adaptation just came out earlier this year, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun if I watched the original Mean Girls on April 30th to celebrate its 20th anniversary release date? And then I also rewatched the musical adaptation um, after watching the original, so it was fresh in my mind and I could do a fun little compare and contrast video on both of the movies here for your viewing pleasure. Okay, so the big thing that stood out to me about the original movie is that I didn't realize that, one, it had narration from Lindsay Lohan uh, playing the main character, of Katie. I had no idea that this was a teenage narration movie at all, so that just pff, hit me real hard um, with that. Also, I may come back to this later, but just want to drop it here. The narration um, is the vehicle for some very heavy-handed moralizing. I don't know if it felt heavy-handed when it originally came out in 2004, but watching it in 2024, as an adult nearing her 40s, it felt very heavy-handed. Um, but yeah, like the, the narration style really hit me, and also like the the interview sort of mockumentary style cuts throughout the movie where they talk to other students and like the teachers at the school, I didn't realize that that was a thing either. And so that was another style choice that I wasn't prepared for. I thought it was really weird. The comparison to that in the musical adaptation is that it's 2024 and everyone has a smartphone now. So instead of doing those like interview style mockumentary little cuts, um, or interstitials, if you will. Uh, they just had the students and celebrities uh, on their phones, like live streaming or TikToking or whatever. And so I think that because our smartphones are in everything that we do now and they're in like all of our media and we've seen them in movies time and time again, I feel like that felt more natural, that was a more natural stylistic choice than the like mockumentary styles of the original movie. However, I was thinking about it a little bit more. And as Katie is a teenage girl who grew up pretty much just with her parents in Kenya um, her whole life, I'm like, yeah, making a mockumentary would be like one of her coping mechanisms it would it would make sense for that character to sort of like i am going to interview and film and observe my new surroundings and the beings in my surroundings and that's how i'm going to understand this new environment that i'm in so thinking about it that way that makes total sense but like 
yeah, when I was first watching, I was like, what is happening? But also, I think going back to the nar- narration bit, um, with the musical, you don't really need a narrator because a musical sort of functions as like the songs are the narrator. Like, it's not a perfect metaphor. I mean, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat literally has a narrator. But like, it feels like the songs are sort of the stand-ins for like the internal uh, thoughts and feelings of the characters, mostly Katie as she is the main character, although other characters do get their big songs, um, particularly Janice. I love her song so much. And that's really nice because then it doesn't feel as heavy-handed moralizing. Like, it's heavy-handed, don't get me wrong. That's the whole point of musicals. The whole point of a musical is, like, I have big feelings that are so big, I must break into song now. And Mean Girls is a movie with a lot of big feelings and not just from Katie. So I feel it's a perfect, it's a perfect stylistic choice to take that narration that was in the original movie and just, like, translate that into big feeling songs for all the main characters. Another thing that I noticed in, like, general between the 2004 and the 2024 version is, like, the humor in terms of racism. Like, the 2004 version, I feel like it was trying to be really edgy, and it is, but, like, it's edgy in that the humor is still punching down. I really cringed when Katie shows up at her new high school and she's in the cafeteria and she goes um, to a table full of black students and she goes up to them and she says, Jumbo! And I'm like, really? Really? Like, that's the type of humor that's like, yeah, okay, maybe the joke is on Katie because she's the one who's like, making a false equivalency in her head of being like, oh, they're black, they must understand an African language that I have learned from living in Kenya. But like, it doesn't feel that way. It just, it feels really, it still feels icky. I I did not like it. That, those jokes, and there's like jokes um, in the original that makes, like the Asian characters are like the butt of the joke, and that all feels really icky and cringy. Luckily, that is not in the 2024 version. They take all of that, like, innuendo and the racist punching down sort of humor. They take that all out. Ooh. Also, it's just a really nice update that Damien is a black queer character. Just big love. Big love to Damien. Also in this point, contrary-wise, when I was watching the original version, I was like, wow, there are a, there's a lot of representation for differently abled students in this movie. And I was like, wow, that, that's so cool. But then I listened to a podcast about Mean Girls after I had seen it, and they mentioned, they're like, yeah, so every time they want to do like one of those mockumentary style things and like say something mean about Regina or about Katie, they would use one of these differently abled students. So at the end of the movie when Katie is breaking apart the queen crown and she's giving out pieces, being like, we can all be royalty, she says to one of the, like, the bigger differently abled girls, um, your hair looks really nice and it must have taken you hours to do. And I know in 2004 that might have been like, groundbreaking but it's another thing that just feels really cringy now like i like that the 2024 version there's more like body diversity there's a lot of different sizes and shapes in 2024 and like regina george is she's not stick thin she's not rachel mcadams but she's still like the hot one so like that's nice but also i noticed in the 2024 version I didn't see anyone in a wheelchair. I don't know where I come down on that one. The original one had more representation of differently abled students. However, I often felt that they only got screen time when they were part of a joke. 
or they were trying to be like they were there to make the audience think oh the main characters are so good like look at how nice they are I don't know I would have to have another watch of it to be like oh yeah I think I think that was a misfire on their part however speaking of representation the 2024 version is absolutely so queer it's so queer and I'm here for it I love that they just they went for it Janice is definitely queer she doesn't say if she's lesbian or not but she is she does take a female presenting person to prom at the end and that was a really great update because I did not like how the the original movie ended with Janice um being asked out by I think it's Kevin the the kid from Mathletes did not like that ending that was another cringe ending where I was like if she's supposed to be a lesbian why not just own up to it I mean if she can't take a girl to the prom at least have her like dance with a girl at the prom you know but like whatever we've come a long way in 20 years so that's good i'm so happy that 2024 is like an out and proud version of mean girls Co going back to that comment i made about the 2004 version trying to be really edgy i feel like they were trying to push things and be edgy but it just came off as like cringy because it was 2004 and they couldn't really um do the things that like we really needed them to do um but in 2024 i feel as though they they have gotten permission to smooth things over and it's just it's so much better with representation and the humor is a lot better i feel that there's so much less punching down on minorities in the 2024 version i feel as though all of the adults in this new version are a lot more mature which is something i appreciated some things that really bothered me from the original version was regina's mom uh played by amy poehler mrs george the whole like the running gag of like her boob job and their dog like chewing on her fake boob and she doesn't feel it i'm just like ew like why why is that there later on when they gather up all of the junior girls in the gymnasium to figure out who wrote the burn book and um the principal says does anybody have a lady problem they'd like to share and i'm just like ew i can feel my insides just shriveling to hear the words lady problem coming out of a man's mouth even a man as beautiful as tim meadows but if i have to listen to you say lady problem to a gymnasium full of junior high schoolers ew one weird thing that like doesn't really fit anywhere but like i have to mention is that in the 2024 version it's just katie and her mom she doesn't have a dad uh when they move back to the states and so when we were watching the original version i was like katie's dad is janitor and if you've seen scrubs you know the man to whom i am referring i do not know that actor's name because in my mind he is janitor from scrubs and katie's dad in 2004 mean girls and that's it that is all i know this man from tiny little thing that gave me a lot of joy when i saw it contrary wise when i said that the 2024 version gained more in like representation and less punching down humor uh, there is something that i felt it lost that the original movie had and that was the low-key message that boys have feelings too i really like how the 2004 version makes that textual like you really get a lot of scenes with aaron where he is like i am a person and i am the other part of this relationship we're trying to have and you are not being honest with me and that's not going to work and i really like that i think that's a really important thing for young people for all people to see in a major motion picture and i feel that that is really a thing that gets lost in the 2024 version it's there but i feel like it's a lot more subtextual you see it really in just like this one scene that doesn't really have any dialogue in it and it's after um katie has told aaron that regina is cheating on him and he goes and he 
catches Regina cheating on him. And then Katie is all excited because she thinks, oh, this is my chance. He's going to turn around and come and ask me out. But he just, he looks at her and there's so much like betrayal and heartbreak on his face. And then he just like turns around and walks away. And I think that's a really powerful scene. It's just like, it's really subtextual. Whereas in the original version, he gets a lot more like dialogue. So I feel that that, the, the emotional depth of the Aaron character gets lost in the 2024 version, I think. I don't know if that's intentional. I mean, maybe it was. Finally, the other thing that I noticed uh, between the two versions was the fashion. Wow, I know it's not a shock. It's not a shock in any way that fashion has changed in 20 years. When I was watching the original version, I was like, man, like everyone's wearing mini skirts. What is happening? In 2024, it's like, cargo pants, track pants, jeans, crop tops, like the fashion has really changed and that's cool. That's just something I noticed. Um, but speaking of like fashion and change, I came to the realization and this is my final thought and then I will free you, I swear. My final thought for Mean Girls 2004 and 2024 is that this movie is the perfect time capsule movie like not just for fashion but like fashion music themes humor i sincerely want paramount to make a mean girls movie like same characters same basic storyline i want them to make a mean girls movie every 20 years and i want it to stand as a testament to that time and you can watch each of the Mean Girls movies every 20 years and you can see how things have changed, how we've progressed in some areas and regressed in other areas and just not made any changes whatsoever in some other areas because we be like that. Every second or third movie can be a musical version. I'm here for it. Crimes Against Bus Drivers. Okay, so really, really quickly. Um, right, so in the original version, when Katie is chasing Regina out of the school, Regina walks across the road. You can see that she's gotten to the other side and Katie is like yelling at her. So she turns around and comes back and she's standing in the road and then she gets hit by the bus. But in my brain, I'm like, no, 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 no. Crimes against bus drivers. That is a very straight road. That bus driver would have seen her come back and stand in the road, any bus driver would have honked and would have slammed on their brakes. They definitely would be going a whole lot slower, even if they didn't see her for some reason. In the original version, that bus would not have hit Regina George that way. The 2024 version is just so much more believable because Katie is chasing Regina out, Regina turns around to say something and then she walks into the road and the bus hits her immediately. So that makes more sense. It's like the bus, she walks in and the bus was like already here. So it literally had no time to honk or stop. That is, it makes, it's, it's so much more believable. 2004 just had crimes against bus drivers. That's all I have to say about that. All right, next month is Pride. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but it'll be something rainbow related, I'm sure. But until then, stay just short of fantastic.